Hi there, it's Tracy, and today I'm using the amazing Birch Press Design Bold Stripe Stencil along with the Memory Box Birthday Roses Corner Stamp Set. I'm going to create a soft rainbow background to highlight some really simple outline stamping. I started off by blending my background with the Stress Oxide inks in a soft rainbow order. I used an A2 sized panel of Bristol Smooth cardstock for my stenciling and I put a piece of purple tape on the back of the panel and secured it to my glass media mat so it wouldn't shift around during stenciling. I sprayed a generous amount of pixie spray onto the back of the stencil, which is a temporary adhesive that keeps your stencil from shifting around while you're using it. I put a couple pieces of purple tape on the upper corners just for a little bit of extra protection. I blended a different color on each one of the stripes and I did not blend any of the ink colors together. I did this with some really simple masking. I used two inch post-it tape to cover the stripes I didn't want to contaminate with another color. I started with one piece for the first stripe, masking over the second stripe. I blended picked raspberry first, going heavier on the left and blending it out to the right. For the second stripe, I used spice marmalade and I moved the first stencil to cover the first stripe and a new mask to cover the stripe below where I was working. As I moved through the colors and remaining stripes, I moved my mask, always covering up one stripe above and one below. Once I got to the green, I flipped my mask so I didn't get any of the yellows from the mask onto the remaining panels. Distress oxide inks take some time to dry, so it's easy to accidentally pick up color you don't want on your blending brushes. I used Twisted Citron for the third stripe, Cracked Pistachio for the fourth, Peacock Feathers for the fifth stripe, and the final stripe was wilted violet. All my stripes, I blended the ink heavier over to the left side and I blended them out to the right just for a softer look. At this point, it looks like a bit of a hot mess, but once I've removed the stencil, it reveals a fabulous rainbow background. Once the panel was dry, I put it into my Misty and I stuck some purple tape on the back of it because I want to stamp off of the panel so I can't put it right into the corner. So by using a bit of purple tape, I can stick it down in the middle and run less of a chance that I'm gonna pick it up along with the stamp in a minute. I chose the outline corner rose image and I placed it over the panel where I want to stamp it, picked it up with the lid, and then I rubbed my embossing buddy all over the panel so that I didn't get any stray powder where I don't want it. When I emboss with VersaFine Onyx Black ink, I always start by inking my stamp up first with VersaMark ink. I always put that on first and then I put the VersaFine over top of the stamp. Some may argue that this isn't necessary to do, but I find I always get a really good black embossed image when I do this. I double stamp the image for an extra dark impression and I love the look of this outline stamp over the stenciled background. I made a little mistake and I trimmed my panel down to five and a quarter inches by four inches before I embossed, which I normally would never do. But fortunately, the ink was still wet enough for the clear embossing powder. I heat embossed the panel off camera and once done, I added three strips of foam tape on the back of the panel before adding it to an A2 sized white card base. The sentiment is also from the Birthday Roses corner stamp set and I white embossed the larger happiest and birthday wishes on black cardstock, trimmed it down and added it to the front with foam tape. Thanks so much for stopping in to create with me today. Give this technique a try. It's a great way to really draw attention to the detail of an outline image when you don't color it. See you next time.